And now that we are in our Tremble axis, we will begin working. So the first thing that if you have worked with uh, Tremble Access 2018 or later, you've noticed that everything you do is inside the map screen now. So when we want to go in and measure or do anything else, we'll actually have a split screen view. So let's go in and pick our routine. Now, normally we'll go in and use our measure topo. And when you use measure topo, you'll collect the point and then assign a feature code to that point. Today we're going to be talking about measure codes where you're going to pick the code and then the measured point will follow the code. So it takes a little bit of setup, but not much. The first and foremost thing that you need to do is make sure that you have a feature code library. Okay, so if you do not have a feature code library, you'll need to assign a feature code library to the job that you're using. So when we pick our measure codes, you'll notice that the right hand of the screen becomes our measure codes tool, and our left hand of the screen remains our map. We can control how this looks over here. If we um, only want to have nine codes available at a time for ease of access and, and quick, quickly navigate through these, you know, that's, that's what we can do. We can control that through our options and bring that anywhere from a three by three up to a five by five. And if you go to a five by five, then that gives you five across by five down. So you can tailor that somewhat to how you want it to be. And then what you'll end up doing is you'll pick the group that you want to work in, and that will have those codes that are only associated with that group. So if you've got a very large feature code library, like what I'm working in here with a couple of hundred codes in it, you can separate those out into groups that are much more easy to manage when you're actually out working. For example, if we were going to be out doing a um, topo and we came across, okay, we're at a road and we've got some pavement features and we need to start collecting and documenting that those features about the road, we might start at the edge of pavement. So we walk up to where we want to survey and then we select that code. By selecting that code, that in initiates our measurement. So as we then collect our measurement and get our values, you'll notice that that code is, is already populated into our screen for us. We're still just measuring topo, but it's doing it in a much more intelligent way. So when we store this and we put in our, our attribute, it then brings us back out to our main measure codes, forcing us to then pick a new code to continue on. Now, if I was going to continue on this line with just my edge of pavement, I might continue just up the line and do another edge of pavement. But let's say there's something out to my right and I want to document the sidewalk. Then I can come and hit the sidewalk. Again, I'll, I'll put in my angle or, you know, take my reading, I should say. I, as, a, uh, as the emulator, I have to act as my own total station. So that's why I'm entering in my own values here. And it's asking for our, our attribute. This would be a concrete sidewalk. So now as we zoom in, right into here we can see our codes start to populate the screen. So now we come across, okay, now I have a, a tree or some other object that's there. I want to switch the type of codes that I am, am you working with. So I pull down my groups list, and then I switch to that type of, of feature that I'm now going to need to, to document. Let's say that we're going into vegetation, and we've got a broadleaf tree. So it's recording that for us. We hit store, then we come into all of our, our attributing for it. And it might have a height of 30 feet and a spread of 50 feet. And it's a, oh, who knows, a great big oak. We might take a photo of it. We store it. So now that's added to our survey. And then we switch from our vegetation list to survey control because now we've come up against you know, finding a some type of survey marker. So again, we, we record our measurement. That's going to come up as a disk. 
And as I store that, it's going to come up to my attributes of it. And that might be, you know, a, a benchmark in GS. And it might have a, a name and a year on it. Now, at any point that I want to see what those attributes are of that uh, particular code, I can come down here and hit the attribute button, and I can go through and look at those, and then, you know, see if that's actually one I want to use or not. Um, if I come up to my group list and I notice that, you know what, I could break out these into a, a few more groups that would make more sense to me, and, and I need to consolidate them a little bit more so I can, on the fly, create a new group. And this group could be and inside of that, if I want to add a code, then all I do is I press and hold on a square. And when I press and hold, then that brings up my whole feature code library to me. And then I can go ahead and start populating that with the codes that I want. So hopefully you find this a, uh, a quick and easy introduction into using the measure codes function in Trimble Access. I really want you to get out there and give it a try. Um, again, it's, it's a, a super powerful tool once you start using it. And once you start using feature codes in general, it can make your life a lot easier by uh, giving you the ability to do a field to fish, finish workflow. Uh, so if you have any questions, please either leave a comment below or contact us directly at Vectors. And again, thank you for your time. If you like this, please like it. And if you want to see more of these videos in the future, please subscribe. Thank you very much.